All right, in this video, we're learning to name chemical compounds. We call that nomenclature. So this is the inorganic nomenclature flowchart right here. So this comes from your textbook. It comes from Nivaldo Tro, is the author of your textbook. So it comes from his textbook, and it's just a flowchart. just tells you how to name different inorganic chemicals. And, and we'll talk about what organic is later, but don't worry about that right now at all. Just all the chemicals that you're going to see immediately are going to be in, inorganic chemicals. So um, there's basically th this these number of options of how to name things. So if it's an ionic compound, we've talked about how to determine if it's ionic or molecular. Um, you have two options. You have this pathway to, uh, to get to this naming, or you have this pathway to get to this naming scheme, and there's only one basic difference between them. And then if it's molecular compounds, we just have one way of naming them. And if it has, if it's an acid, you have two, or th actually, sorry, three ways of naming them. If it's a binary acid, you name them this way. If it's an oxy acid that comes from an anion that ends in eight, you name it this way, and I you name it that way. So, I think the best way to go about this is just show you an example of, or, or more than one example of each of these ways of possibly naming something. So we're gonna just work left to right, the simplest way possible. We're gonna start with this pathway here to right here. And we're gonna call this, uh, and chemists call this type one ionic compound. And it's actually a type one metal. And what that means is that it forms only one type of ion. And that's all we've seen right now. So we're just going to dive right into that. And I'll look at four examples of a type one ionic compound. So the first one is NaCl. So this is, we, we've done the first thing we need to, and we've identified that it's an ionic compound because sodium is a metal. Chlorine is a non-metal. So that's what makes it an ionic compound. Then, just to make sure, it's always good to make sure you understand this compound. So we can look at our periodic table and see that sodium is right here. It's in the plus one column. So we're gonna be bonding a sodium, or we, we did bond together a sodium plus one with a chlorine, which is in the negative one column. So Cl negative, you have sodium positive ion, chlorine, negative ion. And those then, of course, just stuck together to make this compound. And we have to figure out its name. So that's really straightforward. Our flowchart tells us that all you have to do is name this one sodium. And let me show you where it says this on the flowchart. So you just start with the name of the metal cation, and then you change the name of the, an the non-metal anion to end in IDE. So all you have to do is call it, it used to be chlorine. So you just change it to I-D-E. So now it's chloride. So the name of this is sodium chloride. That's it. Sometimes I call this cat dog naming because if you remember the old cartoon, which most of you are probably too young for, it was a, a cat and a dog stuck together as an animal together, and they got into all sorts of trouble. Um, and so I always thought it was funny because they named it after just cat dog. They just slapped the names together. And this is a cat ion and an anion or a dog ion. So you just slap the two names together. Take the cat ion name, the anion name, and just stick them together. Nothing else you have to do. So for everything on this page, that's all we have to do. So this one here is made out of aluminum and oxygen. So all we have to do is call it aluminum oxide. All we have to do is take the name of that one, aluminum, the name of the anion, which changes to IDE from oxygen to oxide, and call it aluminum oxide. But wait, what's this next one we're looking at? Oh no, there's three elements there. And it's not that simple. There's not just two things. I can't just change one. So this is the next step is that this is the same kind of thing. It's sodium still. It's a sodium ion. 
and in this case, there are two of them that are bonded to this polyatomic anion called sulfur. Polyatomic means there are more than one atom that come together to make an ion. So the sulfurs and oxygens are actually bonded covalently with inside of this, but they gain two electrons, so they become a negatively charged ion. So the name of this cation is still sodium, and the name of this anion is called sulfate. So the name of this compound together is sodium sulfate. So still very easy. You just take the name of that, put it with the name of that. It doesn't matter that there are two sodiums. You just put it together. That's all you have to do to name it. The hard part here is, and this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing, is knowing that that is called sulfate. So the only way you can do that really is by memorization. So that's why we have this green sheet that we'll give you in class and it goes through all of the different ways that we know how polyatomic ions are named. And not a comprehensive list, but for the class, this is, this is all you would need to know. And we'll, we'll do some exercises for how to learn this in class, but this is it. I'll hand out the screen sheet in class. I'll post it online for you as well. And you're going to need to memorize it. There are some definitely some neat tricks. It's not nearly as bad as it looks like, but you do need to put in the work and just get to it and memorize this really as soon as possible. Hopefully you've done it in a previous class and you remember most of it. But if not hit it. It's time. All right, so that's how I knew. I've just memorized it over the years. Um, that's called sulfate. This one here is even weirder. It's actually made up of two polyatomic ions. This first one is a polyatomic cation, and there are other polyatomic cations, but that's the only one that you'll see in this class. So you don't have to memor memorize a lot of polyatomic positive ions. And the polyatomic anion is this one. This polyatomic cation is called ammonium, and that polyatomic anion is called hydroxide. So, guess what the name of it is? Ammonium hydroxide. And that's ionic type 1. So after that, we want to go on to ionic type 2. So we get rid of this. Ionic type 2 is this situation. So it's right here. And it works just like ionic type 1, except you can see the problem right here. Those two compounds are both made of titanium and oxygen. So if we just call this one titanium oxide, what would we call that one? Still be titanium oxide. So we have to have a different name. And the different name that we're going to use from these comes from understanding what this chemical compound is made of. So in each case, we know it's an ionic compound because it's a metal, titanium, with a non-metal oxygen. And so let's try to break this down and see if we can understand what, how this compound is composed. So we have titanium bonded to oxygen, in this case just one, and in this case titanium is bonded to two oxygens. If we look on our periodic table to figure out what the charges are, we can be over here with oxygen and we can see that it's a negative two. So we have O2 negative, two negative, two negative. But if we try to figure out what titanium's charge is, we run into a problem. I've only been telling you that the charge of this column is positive 1, that this column is positive 2, this is positive 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, maybe positive or negative 4 in the middle there. But what about this whole middle section that I never told you anything about? Well, the problem here is that they're all positively charged, but we don't know what their charge is. It can be, it's variable. It can be positive, like in the case of iron, it's often positive 2, but sometimes it's positive 3. 
case of copper, it's positive 1 and positive 2. Lots of different possibilities. So, when we get down here, we actually just get to figure out what titanium's charge is. We know that this has to add up to be a neutrally zero charged compound because it was here. There was no charge on it, so it was zero. So we have to figure out what titanium's charge is. Well, if whatever's here has to add to negative two to get zero, it must be a positive two. And if whatever's here has to add to, to negative four to get to zero, it must be a positive four. So we've got it, and that's how we name it. The naming, they're both gonna be called titanium oxide. But we'll tell the difference between them by putting the charge as a Roman numeral in parentheses. So this one is titanium two plus oxide. This one is titanium four plus oxide. And that's it, that's type two. Type two is just the ones that have variable charge, those ones in the middle of the periodic table. And the only difference in naming is we have to put the charge in parentheses as a Roman numeral. While we're talking about type one and type two, I wanna add one more thing. There actually is one more little triangle on here that we actually always know their charge, and it's right here. So if we sort of block out a little triangle on the periodic table here, these ones actually all follow their, their column. So these are all actually three positive charge, just like their column would expect. So they don't count as, as variable charge like the others. These two, the next two over, are actually always two positive charge. And the one down here at the bottom of the triangle, silver, is always just a positive one charge. So these ones actually count as type one metals because they have the same static charge, just like this column and just like this column. So again, this is always positive one, this is always positive two. All of these are variable. We don't know what charge they're gonna be, except we know it's gonna be positive. And these ones are always three plus, two plus, and one plus. All right, so that's ionic compounds, how to name ionic compounds. So the next thing after that, pause it if you wanna go practice some stuff on your own, and I'll dive right into naming molecular compounds. Molecular compounds that are made up of non-metals only are just named one way. You just add Greek prefixes to say how many of the first element and then how many of the second element. So learn by doing, let's practice it. We'll get through it very quickly. How many of these are there? Two. So for two, we use the prefix di. How many of these are there? Five. So we use the prefix penta. So we call this di phosphorus. Penta oxide. That's it. That's it. That's all you have to do to name molecular compounds. Add the prefixes and make sure the second element ends in IDE. There's one more shortcut if you want to take it, but that's it. And this compound will show you that. So there's one carbon, so we use the prefix mono, and one oxygen, so we use the prefix mono. So we'll call this mono carbon monoxide. And the one prefix that you can do if you want, or the one shortcut that you can do if you want, is you can eliminate the mono. So you could just call this carbon instead of mono on the first element. You can eliminate the mono on the first element if you want. This is a perfectly good name. And also, if there are two O's together, you can choose to leave one of the O's out. So it can be If you, if you want, but that is not required. The only, if you said monocarbon monoxide, monoxide, that would be a perfectly correct answer. You could also call it carbon monoxide. Both work. So that's it. So the only rule, add prefixes, change the ending to IDE. 
optional, leave mono off the first element if you want, only mono, and convert two O's into one when they come together. That's called an elision. And that's the only case when it's two O's. All right, so now the last one on this flow chart, the last inorganic naming is acids. And acids are things that start with H, hydrogen. And they have a really special place in chemistry because they, they behave a certain, a, a special way in chemistry when they react with other compounds. So we wanna actually give them their own special names. So there's three ways to do that. And we'll look at the three right here. The first is what we call a binary acid that has two elements. So that, this is an example of it, hydrochloric acid. And they're, they're not ionic compounds, but the way we name them sort of names them like ionic compounds. So we want to actually think of them right now as being ions together. So hydrogen is in that first column with sodium and lithium and hydrogen. So we're going to treat hydrogen like it has a positive one charge. And chlorine has the charge of negative one. So in this first compound here, we're combining hydrogen ion with the chloride anion. So the acid name for anything that ends in IDE means we change that ending, we add a prefix of hydro, and then we change the ending to ic acid. If it ends in IDE, hydroic acid. So we call this hydrochloric acid. So notice the hydrogen itself doesn't ever get into this name. The, the word acid at the end is actually what indicates that it has an H plus on it. All right, so the next one, I'm gonna actually change pen color so that hopefully it stays separate. We have to identify the ions present. H2, S, and SO3. So the first two are hydrogen ions. SO3, two negative, is called sulfite. And that brings us to the next rule. If it ends in ITE, if an acid ends in ITE, all we have to do is change the ending of the anion to us acid. If it ends in ITE, we just change the ending to OUS acid. So the name of this compound, since it's an acid of sulfite, we call it sulfurous acid. It's changed ending to us acid, and that's H plus bonded to sulfite. The last one is really similar. It's two H pluses. bonded to SO4 two negative, and that one's name is sulf8. When anything ends in ATE, our chart tells us that if it ends in ATE, we change it to ic acid. So, it becomes ic acid, so sulfuric acid. And we have a really silly saying to help us remember this relationship of the ite and the us acid and the ate and the ic acid. We say the white mouse ate icky cheese. So ite goes with us and ate goes with ic. Silly saying, but it helps you sometimes remember if you get nervous on a test and are freaking out. So that's it. That's how we do all of our naming for inorganic chemistry. And if you didn't notice it by now, the hardest thing is trying to remember the names of these polyatomic ions. So get to that green sheet and memorize those names. And ask me about it in class and I'll give you some shortcuts to help you remember.